Welcome to this complete Brussels, Belgium travel guide. Ah, Brussels, a city brimming with timeless charm, rich history, and a unique blend of French and Dutch culture. Today, we'll be whisking you away on a virtual exploration of 10 iconic sites, from the grandeur of the Royal Palace to the whimsical allure of the Atomium, and even the pint-sized wonder that is the Mannequin Piss. So sit back, relax, and get ready to embark on an exciting journey through the heart of Europe, Brussels. Starting our countdown at number 10, we have the Grand Place. A sight to behold, the Grand Place is nothing short of a masterpiece. Nestled in the heart of Brussels, this historical square dates back to the 10th century, having seen the city grow and evolve over many centuries. It's not just a square, it's a tapestry of architectural marvel, a testament to Brussels' rich history. The Grand Place is adorned with opulent guild halls, each one an architectural jewel in its own right. The Town Hall and King's House, with their Gothic and Neo-Gothic grandeur, stand as the crowning glory of this magnificent square. Once a bustling marketplace, it now serves as the city's social and cultural hub, hosting everything from concerts to flower markets. The Grand Place's allure lies in its ability to make you feel like you've stepped back in time while still being very much a part of the present. The Grand Place, a grand start to our top 10 countdown. At number 9, we find the Atomium, a symbol of Belgium's atomic age. This architectural marvel was first unveiled at the Brussels World's Fair in 1958, a beacon of the atomic age and the optimistic vision of the future during that time. With its unique structure, nine stainless steel spheres connected to form a shape of a unit cell of an iron crystal magnified 165 billion times. It's a sight that's sure to leave you in awe. Inside, each sphere offers a different experience from exhibitions about the Atomium's history to the design culture of the 50s. The highest sphere even houses a restaurant offering a panoramic view of the Brussels skyline that you won't soon forget. With its blend of history, science and art, the Atomium is a testament to Belgium's spirit of innovation and resilience. The Atomium, a sparkling gem in Brussels skyline. Coming in at number three, the quirky and beloved mannequin Piz. This amusing bronze statue, depicting a little boy in the act of, well, relieving himself, is a proud symbol of Brussels' rebellious spirit. It's located at the junction of Rue de l'Etouve and Rue du Chêne, not far from the Grand Place. Now, you might be wondering about the significance of this cheeky chap. Legend has it that during a battle against the troops of Berthoud, a two-year-old lord named Julian saved the day by urinating on the enemy's explosives. Since then, Mannequin Pierce embodies the city's resilience and humor. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Throughout the year, Mannequin Pierce is dressed up in various costumes, reflecting Brussels' rich cultural calendar. From Santa Claus to Elvis Presley, this little guy has worn over 900 outfits, so... When you visit Brussels, don't miss the chance to see Mannequin Piss, a small statue with a big personality. Ah. Number seven takes us to the grandeur of the Royal Palace of Brussels. This majestic edifice, located in the heart of the city, is not just a residence, but a symbol of Belgium's constitutional monarchy. Its history stretches back to the 18th century, and it stands as a testament to the nation's rich past. Every corner of the palace whispers tales of royal gatherings and state affairs. Its vibrant history reflected in each meticulously crafted detail of its beautiful interiors. From the grand throne room adorned with crystal chandeliers to the resplendent marble room with its opulent frescoes, the palace is a splendid fusion of neoclassical and Louis XVI architectural styles. Though the reigning monarch does not actually reside here, it serves an important role as the king's administrative residence where he exercises his royal prerogatives. During summer, its doors open to the public, offering a glimpse into the royal side of Brussels. The royal palace, a glimpse into the royal side of Brussels. At number six, we dive into the surreal world of the Magritte Museum. Nestled in the heart of Brussels, this museum is a treasure trove of the whimsical and the thought-provoking housing the world's largest collection of works by the legendary René Magritte. A Belgian artist through and through, Magritte's influence on the world of surrealism was and remains unparalleled. 
Each corner of the museum is a journey into Magritte's mind, filled with his characteristic thought bubbles, floating men in bowler hats and unflinchingly ordinary objects in extraordinary settings. His works challenge the viewer, pushing us to question our perception of reality. The museum showcases not only his paintings, but also his sculptures, drawings and even early commercial art. It's a comprehensive look into the life and mind of a man who dared to dream beyond the confines of convention. The Magritte Museum, a surreal stop on our journey. Number five brings us to Mini Europe, where you can tour the continent in an afternoon. Imagine a place where the iconic landmarks of Europe are brought together, reduced to a scale of 1 to 25. That's Mini Europe for you. Stroll past the Leaning Tower of Pisa, stand in awe of the Eiffel Tower, and marvel at the Acropolis, all without leaving Brussels. In this park, Europe's diversity is celebrated through a collection of over 350 monuments from nearly 100 European cities. It's not only an amusing journey, but also an educational one. Each model is accompanied by a detailed explanation in several languages, providing insights into the history and significance of each landmark, but it's not all serious. There's a playful side to Mini Europe too. Look out for the quirky animations that bring some monuments to life, adding a dash of humor to your tour. Mini Europe, a miniature tour of the continent within the city. Coming in at number eight, the Belgian Comic Strip Center, a tribute to the country's rich comic strip culture. Nestled in the heart of Brussels, this architectural gem is more than just a museum. It's a vibrant celebration of Belgium's illustrious history in the world of comic strip art. Inside this Art Nouveau masterpiece, you'll find a universe of colorful characters and enchanting stories. The center's exhibits offer a captivating journey through time, exploring the evolution of this dynamic art form. From the early beginnings to the golden age and the present day, the Belgian Comic Strip Center covers it all. The stars of the show, undoubtedly Belgium's beloved comic strip heroes, Tintin, the Smurfs, and many more. Each character has their own dedicated space, allowing visitors to dive into their fantastic worlds. So, whether you're a comic enthusiast or just a curious visitor, prepare to be whisked away on a delightful journey of imagination, the Belgian comic strip center where art and humor meet. At number three, we find the Parc du Cinquantenaire, a green oasis in the heart of the city. Nestled within Brussels' bustling cityscape, this park is a testament to Belgium's rich past and vibrant present. Its history stretches back to the late 19th century, when it was established to celebrate Belgium's 50th anniversary of independence. Dominating the park's landscape is the triumphant Cinquantenaire Arch, a grand archway that serves as a symbol of Belgium's resilience and progress. This architectural marvel is bookended by the Royal Military Museum and the Art and History Museum, both offering a deep dive into the country's cultural and military past. But the Parc du Cinquantenaire is not just about history. It's also a place where locals and visitors alike can escape the city's hustle and bask in tranquility. Whether you're picnicking under the shade of mature trees or strolling along the serene pathways, the park offers a much needed urban retreat. Parc du Cinquantenaire, an urban retreat with a historical touch. Number two takes us to the majestic St. Michael and St. Gudula Cathedral, a beacon of Brussels skyline. This cathedral is more than just an architectural marvel. It's a symbol of the city's rich history and cultural heritage. Constructed during the 11th century, the cathedral's grandeur is a testament to the craftsmanship of the time. Its twin towers reaching high into the sky are a beacon of serenity amidst the bustling city. The cathedral's stunning architecture, an amalgamation of Romanesque, Gothic and Baroque styles, is a visual feast for the eyes. Inside, the cathedral continues to impress with its awe-inspiring stained glass windows, intricately carved pulpits and the grand organ, a masterpiece in its own right. But it's not just about the physical beauty. The cathedral has played a significant role in Brussels history, hosting royal weddings and coronations throughout centuries. St. Michael and St. Godola Cathedral, a testament to Brussels' architectural grandeur. And finally, at number one, we have the Brussels City Museum, the perfect place to wrap up our tour. Nestled within the heart of the Grand Place, the museum is a treasure trove of artifacts and exhibitions, each one offering a unique insight into the city's rich history. From ancient relics to modern memorabilia, the museum's vast collection paints a vivid picture of Brussels through the ages. 
The museum's pièce de résistance is undoubtedly the original model of the city, meticulously crafted with painstaking attention to detail. It's like peering into a time capsule, revealing Brussels as it was centuries ago. Alongside these historical exhibits, the museum also hosts rotating exhibitions showcasing the city's vibrant culture and creativity. And let's not forget the building itself, a masterpiece of Gothic architecture that is a sight to behold. Its grandeur is a fitting testament to the city it represents. The Brussels City Museum, the perfect end to our journey through this enchanting city. Thank you for joining us on this tour through Brussels, the heart of Europe.